Good afternoon, I'm Giovanni Dennis with the Midday News. A special welcome if you're joining us online at onespotmedia.com. Three nurses were among those persons who died from COVID-19 at the weekend. President of the Nurses Association of Jamaica, Patsy Edwards Henry, made the revelation on the morning agenda on Power 106 FM on Tuesday. She says close to 200 nurses island-wide are currently isolated after contracting the virus. The numbers, as you understand, while they increase, they are going to now include the nurses. So I have 27 nurses out from the University Hospital, 20 from the Cornwall Regional Hospital, a number of nurses from Mandeville, Maypen, all across the island, totaling what we could say almost 200 nurses are out positive, and those are the ones that I know. In the meantime, 561 new COVID-19 cases were recorded within the last 24 hours. 1,892 samples were tested. This represents a 29.6% positivity rate. Their ages range from 4 months to 103 years. This pushes the number of confirmed COVID-19 cases to 27,465. Kingston and St. Andrew recorded the largest number of cases with 169, followed by St. Catherine with, one, with 103 and St. Anne with 46. Meanwhile, there were six deaths in the last 24 hours, bringing the island's death toll to 460. Three of the individuals are from Trelawney, two from St. James and one from Clarendon. Their ages range from 36 to 81 years. The health ministry is also reporting 301 people have been hospitalized, 29 are critically ill and 29 are also moderately ill. The number of active cases is now 12,178. The health ministry says the current AstraZeneca vaccine will be able to treat persons with the UK variant of COVID-19. It comes following a revelation from Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton on Monday that there were seven cases of the variant in the island after results of tests were received from the Caribbean Public Health Agency lab in Trinidad. Even up to last week, we saw data coming out of the UK that showed that in that the AstraZeneca vaccine is both effective in the elderly population as well as in cases where you have the UK variant. Stakeholders in the funeral industry may be in line for financial grants following the ban on funerals and burials which took effect yesterday. Local Government Minister Desmond McKenzie made the announcement at a recent media briefing. Sandy Williams has the details. Just over a week ago, Prime Minister Andrew Holness announced a ban on funerals and burials. That ban took effect yesterday and will remain in place until March 22. Since the announcement, funeral home operators have been blasting the Prime Minister's decision. Among their concerns, the impact the ban will have on people employed in the sector, particularly those who dig graves and vaults. At a media briefing yesterday, local government minister Desmond McKenzie said he has been meeting with stakeholders in the industry. And based on the consultations, Mr. McKenzie said he is giving consideration to providing financial grants to those affected. However, he did not indicate how much money might be allotted. This grant will be provided to those who I said before are responsible for the construction of the graves and the digging of the graves and the building of the vaults once we have agreed. Mr. McKenzie said discussions are ongoing regarding exemptions for the burial or cremation of certain bodies. The other area that we have been discussing that we will advance those discussions on Thursday is the burial or the cremation of bodies that are in an advanced state of decomposition, the burial or cremation of bodies that are not in an advanced stage of decomposition but have been recommended for immediate burial by the appropriate health authorities. 
and the burial or cremation of indigent persons who die in the custody of the state. Funerals and burials have been identified as super spreader events as they usually attract large crowds despite the protocol restricting gatherings to no more than 10 people. The ban is part of measures to contain the spread of COVID-19. Sandy Williams, TVJ News. Professor of, Professor of Occupational Health and Safety at the University of Technology, Dr. Alverston Bailey, is cautioning the government against a lockdown. His comments come after the Prime Minister announced that there could be a possible lockdown if the number of COVID-19 cases continues to rise. O'Shane Masters reports. In a press conference last evening, Prime Minister Andrew Hall has hinted a possible lockdown is on the horizon if the number of COVID-19 cases continue to rise. To date, the country has recorded over 27,000 confirmed cases of the virus. But despite the alarming figures, Professor of Occupational Health and Safety at the University of Technology, Dr. Alverston Bailey, believes the government should focus more on stepping up COVID-19 enforcement measures. The government can seriously consider employing COVID measures which is employed in Britain, and it has worked in order to, just like municipal police, to just walk around and encourage persons to to conform to protocol and give them a, a ticket if they fail to conform, and if they get real aggressive, to call the police. At the press conference yesterday, Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton confirmed that the highly contagious UK variant of COVID-19 is active in the Jamaican population after seven of the samples sent for testing came back positive. With that, Professor Bailey believes the country is in crisis mode. Since February started, has been in a region of 30%, which means three out of every 10 Jamaican tested are positive. This is not good news. It means that the community spread is now rapid. He says given the confirmation of the British variant of the virus in the island, the government now needs to be on the lookout for the South African and the Brazilian variants. Professor Bailey is of the view that if those variants are confirmed, then the country will be severely impacted. And we now also need to look for the South African variant and the Brazilian variant. And if all those variants arrive, then we are going to be in major trouble because, as the Prime Minister said, we are in the darkest hour now. And if the, if the variants are allowed to spread even further, the hour is going to get even darker. And so... We are going to have to do something and do something drastic in order to contain the spread. Oshane Masters, TVJ News. Finance Minister Dr. Nigel Clark will this afternoon open the budget debate in Parliament for the next fiscal year beginning April 1. The budget, which was tabled in Parliament in February, shows that the government intends to spend $830 billion for fiscal year 2021-2022. Included in the budget are monies to finance the Health Ministry's plan to vaccinate 2 million people over the next 12 months. This is part of a $60 billion stimulus package. Meanwhile, Member of Parliament for Manchester Northwestern Mikhail Phillips is expected to table a motion in the House later today seeking to remove the Queen as Jamaica's head of state. The motion also calls for the installation of a president of, as the head of the country. Mr. Phillips outlined in the motion that this should be done after a committee is established to undertake a six-month public education exercise and the appropriate steps taken, including a referendum on the same day of the next local government election. Questions are also to be tabled about the decision to grant a license for mining at the Dry Harbour Mountains in St. Anne. The issue caused controversy after it emerged that Prime Minister Andrew Holness overturned a decision by the National Environment and Planning Agency not to grant a license to mine the area. And it's now time for a break here on the Midday News, but please stay with us. We'll have much more when we return. Welcome back and we're continuing the news. Calls this afternoon for more women in representational politics to be given so-called traditional safe seats. 
As Kalisha Williams reports, the lack of safe seats for women, women is being blamed for the gender imbalance in Parliament. A forum by the European Union in Jamaica to address gender inequalities on International Women's Day. And this panel of women had lots to say. Among the top agenda items, the number of women in representational politics. I remember at the time, in 2016, the constituency I took, a rural constituency, East Rural St. Andrew, was probably one of the most challenging seats to win. It is time that women are given safe seats. Opposition spokesperson on gender and justice Donna Scott Motley believes giving women traditional safe seats will make it easier for more women to become legislators. Safe seats are reserved for special men. I have personally walked the constituencies of both of these women and I will say frankly I have the highest admiration for them. Not even donkeys can travail some of the paths that they do making contact with every voter. So yes, when you see women having safe seats so that you know they don't have to fight so hard to win, that is also an inspiration. After the September 3rd general election, 18 women were elected to the lower house and 45 men. But when you look at some, of the, at some of the committees, women are so underrepresented and they are put on committees which are considered to just to be committees which deal only with women issues without recognizing that all issues are women issues. We are first and foremost legislators. We are there to actually make policies as you mentioned a while ago that most of the women are not necessarily in the cabinet positions and that is how you have policy changes and i think we need to see more women in those positions kalisha williams tvj news the kingston and saint andrew municipal corporation kcmc will be taking action against construction activities on sunday this following numerous complaints about dust and noise nuisance on a day traditionally set aside for peace and quiet, Cody and Barrett reports. Sundays are designated rest days when residents enjoy the quiet of their homes. Unfortunately for some residents in Kingston and St. Andrew, construction works have been disrupting that schedule. Mayor of Kingston, Delroy Williams, says according to the law, no work must take place on Sundays. Starting yesterday, the municipality began site checks. Today we are out and we have been in Mona. Charlemont, Paddington, Millsboro, and we are heading to Patrick City, Avondale, and other areas across the municipality. Some of these areas are areas that we have been receiving frequent complaints. While he observed no construction activities, there were some breaches. We have noticed dust nuisance, and we have also noticed in the deterioration of some of our roadways and it is in the condition of approval for persons to reinstate the roadway, so we, we have taken note and we will ensure that that is done. Encroachment breaches were also observed, and people were asked to contact the municipal corporation to address other issues. Mr. Williams listed the areas with the most complaints. Recently, we have been receiving complaints from Paddington. I would say Paddington is a main one, some sections of Avondale, Millsboro and so forth. But we are here out today, we are around and we have not noticed any, which means that the, 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 the persons would have stopped. Cody and Barrett, TVJ News. Staff at the Maypen Hospital in Clarendon staged a peaceful protest in front of the facility on Monday over the police killing of a mentally ill man on Saturday. It happened across from the hospital. 35-year-old Damien Booth was reportedly shot four times. Staff members say he was like family to them. I've known Damien for four years. He's never been violent. He will come and he will ask for $50 or he will ask for some food. If you say no, Damien will just walk away. So we can't understand what caused this, why Damien was shot like this. We didn't, he's right at our gate and we didn't even get the opportunity to try and save Damien. 
and that makes it even more painful. He did not even give a shot in his foot that we could save Damien's life. We love Damien so much. He hears back he hears. We bear Damien, we feed Damien, we close Damien, we give him everything. His sister has been practically living at the facility for over 20 years despite attempts to keep him at home. She is upset that there has been no indication if the policeman who fatally shot her brother has been removed from frontline duty. And when you shoot him, you left him on the ground. And you jump in your private gear gas station. Say, I'm a wanted man from farm. The Independent Commission of Investigations, Indicom, says the policeman has been interviewed and his gun seized as they probe the shooting. The Jamaica Public Service Company, JPS, has announced that it will be closing its Morant Bay branch on Church Street in St. Thomas. The announcement has left some residents worried about how they will be able to pay their bills, Cody and Barrett reports. JPS customers in St. Thomas were left confused yesterday after they showed up to the office and there were no customer service representatives. The company had announced last month that it will be closing the branch and during the transitioning phase, only the Bill Express will be allowed to continue. But ahead of its permanent closure, residents say they do not understand how to make online payments. I'm worried to most people, even like the same, but I don't understand the online. So they can't go shoot to something else, later off. You see? And those people don't really understand it. This thing is not going to work because we come from the area and we don't have any way to pay the web like this. And, and, and they are foolishness. I don't see that you can't. We are old people, we are going to manage. You understand? We are not in a post office up there, we are not in a post office. We are going to manage to pay the light bill. That can't be right. One resident suggested that a gradual approach would have been better. Right now, not a lot of people have food. Not a lot of people have food that can't go online. So I don't think so it's, a, it's a system where we're really ready for the people. We understand them are trying to do something, but then have to use some people and take time with some of the other people. There. We have a lot of old people that don't go online. How it going to be? I think it's wrong still. That is my view, really, when we have to say. Media and public relations manager for JPS, Audrey Williams, noted that they are aware of some customers having challenges using the online portals. However, she's encouraging customers to use other payment agencies in the parish. There are a number of options. Bill Express, Paymaster, Prime Trust, Cambio, and of course you have the banks. Uh, there are actually 690 payment agencies across Jamaica. So we're not moving away from them. They're able to do, you know, their business with us just the same. And um, they can always call us. That's something that everybody, whether they are online savvy or not, can do. And we'll work through whatever the issues are that our customers have and just help them through this transition. According to Mrs. Williams, the Bill Express will be in operation until April 1, when the facility will be permanently closed. Cody Ann Barrett, TVJ News. And that's the Midday News. I'm Giovanni Dennis. Join us at 7 for Primetime News. On behalf of the news, sports and production teams, have a good afternoon.